There's still a handful of great players left on the free agency market. And on today's episode, we'll discuss whether or not the Dallas Stars can afford to make another move, which players they could trade in order to create more cap space, and name a few players that they could be interested in, and maybe some players that are interested in the Stars as well. All of this coming up on today's episode of Locked On Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Wednesday, July 4th. I hope each and every one of you had a great and safe July 4th uh, celebrating American Independence Day. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, thank you for stopping by and making Locked On Stars your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube and follow along on your favorite podcasting platform as well. We are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen to this podcast and appreciate each of you tuning in throughout the off season as we are getting closer and closer uh, to the beginning of training camp, but still plenty of time left here with free agency and potential trades for the, the stars and for the rest of the NHL. And there are still some really great players out there on the market for the Stars to potentially sign in order to improve their roster, at least at the time of recording this, uh, which I'm recording this on July 3rd, so that way I can have the 4th off, and then uh, you guys will be seeing this on, on the 5th. So I imagine that most of these players have probably stayed in place, as some of these players are American players and probably have some sort of plans for July 4th, but at the time of recording, there's still some pretty big-name free agents out there on the market, including Vladimir Tarasenko, Patrice Bergeron, Matt Dumba, and Patrick Kane, who, while I was getting prepared to record this episode, found out via a tweet from David Pagnota that Kane, who recently had surgery for his hip, uh, is you know recovering and won't be ready to play for three to five months, but is on the radar of a few contenders, including the Dallas Stars, which we'll talk about a little bit later on in the episode, but that was news to me, although this tweet did come out on July 1st, so only a couple days uh, before the recording of this episode. But I did find that interesting uh, when looking at the remaining big name free agents out there on the market. But you're saying to yourself while you're listening to or watching this that the stars don't necessarily have the luxury uh, of pursuing a lot of the players that I just named, let alone really any uh, player of, of, of note uh, in order to improve the roster as the Dallas Stars don't necessarily have a ton of cap space, just a little bit over $582,000 in the bank for the stars right now. So this means that if the stars are looking to add any of the players I just named or anyone else still out there on the free agent market, or, you know, looking to build the team through trades, this means that the stars would probably have to trade some of their own players in order to make room. And there are two players that come to mind in this case. And I know this is, these are two players that plenty of other people have thrown out as well in Mason Marchment and Roddick Foxa. Both of those players come to mind even though they both have no trade clauses built into their contract, those are a little bit easier to work with because they are not an outright no move clause where a no move clause, the player would have to full on consent to wherever they're being traded. And that can make things a little bit more difficult. Whereas a no trade clause is a player submitting either five to 10 teams on a, on a list of, you know, I can't be traded here, but then that opens things up for every team that's not on that list. And so it's a little bit easier to negotiate and work with a no trade clause as opposed to a no move clause. But again, both players, Marchman and Foxa, have both of those built into their contracts right now. And Mason Marchman might provide a little bit more value on the market for a potential suitor, for a potential team looking to add his services to their roster. And trading him would allow the Dallas Stars to get rid of the bigger contract of he and Foxes coming in at $4.5 million for the next three seasons for Mason Marchman. And, and while th this could be appealing to that degree, I think it would be beneficial if the Stars could find themselves with an extra $4.5 in cap space. I don't necessarily think that Jim Neal would be looking to make this move 
after only having Mason Marchment for one season. I know overall, the, the entire product of Marchment's first season in Dallas was underwhelming. And obviously, you know, there's things to be said there and there, there's things that need to be worked on and adjusted. But there's also an argument to be made that there was some potential and there were some points in the season where Mason Marchment looked excellent playing for this Stars organization. And I just don't envision a world where unless the return is just out of this world, that, that Jim Neal would look to move on from Mason Marchment so quickly after only seeing him for one season and one run in the playoffs. It could be harder to also move the contract. While it would be beneficial for the Stars, you know that they're looking to get as much space as possible. Uh, and so, you know, they're looking to send off the entire contract, no retention, giving the complete 100% rights of Mason Marchment to whoever would be making the trade for him. And while it's not the, the you know, the biggest deal or the, the most massive contract to take on uh, 4.5 a season for the next three seasons is quite a bit of a commitment. And that might be a little bit more difficult for Neil to sell to another NHL GM looking to add a player to their roster. So I do think that if you're going to move on from one of these two forwards, moving on from Radek Foxa may be a little bit easier for one. He is a little bit cheaper, so it, it, cheaper and there's less term on his deal. So it could be a little bit easier to pitch the idea of trading him at $3.25 million a season for the next two years. But it would also be another kind of, you know, you're sacrificing a, a player that of quality and you don't necessarily know what you're getting in return in terms of the trade and also who, who else you would be signing it, you know, through free agency. It would also be very tough to see such a loyal player like Roddick Fox a go, who's been around for quite some time now, but I do think that it could be worth it if they're able to add the right piece to replace him. And it wouldn't necessarily have to be a full-on replacement for Foxa himself, as the Stars might already have some of those in Craig Smith, Sam Steele, and of course you have Matt Duchesne now on the roster as well. But Foxa does offer some pretty good defense and face-off skills, which could be missed from the team, and he packs a pretty good frame as well with his size and weight, can definitely throw himself around and you know, be a menace to the other teams, pretty decent on the penalty kill as well. But I think the Stars have a tendency to, you know, build those kind of players for their team. It seems like they always have three or four deadly faceoff guys. And they do have a handful of some pretty good defensive forwards like Rope Hintz, Ty Delandria, who's probably re-signing sometime soon. And then even, you know, Joe Pavelski, despite his age, still pretty good. Jamie Benn. Uh, and, and then, you know, you look at, you know, your Wyatt Johnston's, Logan Stankovens, Maverick Borks, and you hope that you're getting some of that return for cheaper and at a younger age down the line, whether that be this season or in future seasons. So it could be difficult to potentially say goodbye to a player like Foxa, who, you know, isn't necessarily the, the, the top dog in the organization, not someone that people are selling out the AAC to see but he is a valuable player and he's been valuable to this team over the past few years and even at times can pack a little bit of a scoring punch. I, I know he scored over 10 goals this past season despite playing the majority of the year either on the third or even fourth line. Uh, a pretty effective player, but if the Stars could find a way to you know, trade him uh, and you know get maybe a decent return there, I'm not really sure what that would look like given the no trade clause and whatnot, but then you go out and sign a, an effective top four defenseman and I think that that might be worth it if you're able to structure the roster and the lineup in the right way. But if you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comment section down below what your thoughts would be on trading either Mason Marchment or Roddick Foxa. Do you think that both of those players should be on the move? Do you think just one? Give me your thoughts on trading both of those players. But of course, it wouldn't just stop there. You trade those players. The idea would be to continue to add more talent. And we'll take a look at two players that I talked about to open the show and Patrick Kane and Matt Dumba and see if it would even work for them to come to Dallas and what their roles would be and if it's even worth pursuing them. We'll cover that coming up next. Today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting MLB on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right, just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. That's 200 you can spend on betting everything from the money line to over-under to who you think is going to hit the first home run. All on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. 
So sign up today and visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is an official partner of Major League Baseball. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day as we continue on throughout the offseason. Thank you to all the everydayers out there who continue to make us a part of your daily routine. And it feels like we're back in familiar territory. Here we go again. Once again, the Dallas Stars are linked to Patrick Kane in some sort of trade rumor and now really free agency rumor. It feels like the past year and a half or so, there's been times where the you know the fire starts up of, oh, the Stars are interested in Patrick Kane or Patrick Kane's looking to join a contender and it's rumored that he's interested in the Dallas Stars. And again, according to Dave Pagnota on Twitter, July 1st, Patrick Kane, who had hip resurfacing surgery a month ago, and the recovering time is another three to five months, is on the radar of a few contenders, including the Dallas Stars. It just feels like this is maybe the third or fourth time since I've started hosting this podcast that I've had a discussion. But if it keeps coming up in the news and on social media from somewhat credible sources, I'm going to continue to talk about it because it feels like it just won't go away until maybe he either signs with the team or signs somewhere else this offseason. And then I feel like those rumors go to rest for a little bit because it felt like, you know, that there were stretches of last offseason with him going into the final year of his deal with the Blackhawks. Oh, maybe the Stars would make a trade in order to get Patrick Kane. But then they didn't do it. And then the trade deadline rolls around in the middle of the season. The Blackhawks pretty much out of the playoff picture. The Stars sitting in first place in their division. And the rumors kick up again. I'm not really entirely sure how it always happens, but it does. And I guess part of it is he does probably want to go to some sort of contender to close out his career. And he, I think he would be smart to be interested in the Dallas Stars, given that they just went to the Western Conference Final and they seem poised to be a competitive team for the next handful of seasons, given the current talent that they have accumulated on their team. So if he is interested in Dallas, while you know it feels like we talk about it a ton every few months, I, I understand why he might be interested in joining a team like the Stars. And really the biggest thing holding the Stars back last offseason and at the trade deadline this past year was Kane's cap hit, which wouldn't necessarily be a factor right now. And I will say, if he is interested in joining the Dallas Stars, Patrick Kane would be wise to follow in the footsteps of another great American-born player in Joe Pavelski and potentially take a huge pay cut. Obviously, again, the Stars would have to move on from some other contracts on the team, Foxa, Marchment, or maybe there's other players who have no move clauses if you can somehow move on from them. I know that that is a possibility as well, but a lot less likely than a player like Marchman or Foxa, but Kane would be wise to do so. He's clearly not going to be demanding as much money as he got on his last contract with that cap hit at $10.5 million a season, although he still can provide good value, so you know that he would want to get paid a pretty decent amount uh, given that this could potentially be his last NHL contract depending on how long he signs with whatever organization that he does choose to join coming in at 34 years old. But I do think that he, again, would be very wise to follow in the steps of Joe Pavelski and try to find a way to take a substantial pay cut while still making pretty good money. Uh, Pavelski, you know, this coming season still making $3.5 million. And given the amount of money he's earned over the span of his career, that's still a really decent chunk of change for Pavelski. And I think Kane should be satisfied taking something in that range, if not maybe even a little less, as his role would probably be a little bit more limited as he'd be playing on a second or third line with this Stars team. But he definitely still can provide good value. He still is an effective player. He was effective with the Blackhawks while they were one of the least competitive teams in the league. And while the Rangers certainly had a disappointing end to their season, he was a pretty effective player with that team as well. Uh, it just, I guess, was not meant to be for them to go past the first round, but he definitely still has plenty to offer. So there's something to be said of continuing to add to the offensive firepower that the Dallas Stars currently are constructing with the players that they've had for a while. You add Matt Duchesne, and you add players like Craig Smith and Sam Steele that aren't offensive juggernauts, but do provide a little bit of upside compared to maybe some other players that you've said goodbye to in free agency. However, I do think that the Dallas Stars would be doing themselves a disservice if they go out and add another forward. Because even if you can convince Patrick Kane to take a substantial pay cut to join your team, you're still probably spending around 3 or $4 million in order to acquire him 
And then you're, you're back at square one where you're probably under $100 million in available cap space and you still haven't gone out and signed a premier defenseman. And I know that I spent a good chunk of yesterday's episode saying that you don't have to go out and get your big name defenseman right now, but you still could be harming yourself somewhere down the line uh, if, if you go out and add another forward without addressing the blue line at this point. At some point, you need to take time and look elsewhere. And I think the Stars would be better off potentially using their resources to help structure the roster on the blue line if that's even possible. I know part of the reason that the Stars really haven't gotten a grand slam of a defensive signing yet is because the options on the blue line and free agency, if we're being honest, are definitely not as great as they've been in years past. Although there is one player in Matt Dumba, which I'll talk about in the next segment, that I think the Stars could potentially target if he doesn't get picked up by another team. And I mean, if Dumba you know, does get picked up by another team, then I really do think that you're kind of out of luck of getting a really great top four defenseman then maybe you can consider going after Patrick Kane and then again hope that you can make some moves at the trade deadline in the season to get the final pieces put in the puzzle in order to build that defense that needs to be built for the playoffs because the playoffs and the regular season are very different. And so I think the Dallas Stars right now have a pretty good team that could compete in the regular season on a night-to-night basis, but definitely this is not the final product you want in order to make another deep playoff run. Uh, and again, let me know if you're continuing to to have some thoughts uh, as we continue on on this episode. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts on Patrick Kane with yet another uh, linked rumor between him and the Dallas Stars. I guess Jim Nill just has a, a thing for signing great American players, and he does have a pretty nice handful of them currently on the team. And, and it could could be very fun to watch Kane. Uh, it would add to continue to add to the potential mantra of who needs defense when you're going to score five or six goals a game. And I feel like that's what we said after the stars got Matt Duchesne. And if you add Patrick Kane to that mix, you're saying it even more so. And that's one of, if not the deadliest offense in the national hockey league, but offense can only get you so far at some point, you do need to play some defense and support your goaltender uh, and not leave them out to dry as often as the stars tended to do in the back stretches of the playoffs last year. Third and final segment of today's episode of Locked on Stars. More rumors, again, from Dave Pagnota. I feel like this guy just loves to throw things out about the Dallas Stars. Whether or not there's any stock worth putting into them uh, is to be determined, but certainly worth talking about this offseason. I actually saw this on Reddit. Uh, a Stars fan on the Dallas Stars subreddit posted, David Pagnota of the fourth period is reporting that the Stars are targeting Matt Dumba and looking to trade Mason Marchment to make room and then there is a link to some article. I could not myself find this full article, uh, or I'm assuming that's what this is from, uh, but there was an image attached to the post on the subreddit that said the Dallas Stars are one of the teams that would love to add Dumba, but they need to clear out money, and there's some chatter. Mason Marchment might be in play. He has a 10-team no-trade list and three years left on his contract. So th- there is some rumblings there that... Again, Mason Marchment could be on the move, and the Dallas Stars could be interested in adding Matt Dumba. And yes, this is the Matt Dumba who became arguably the most hated man in Dallas during the playoffs after that hit on Joe Pavelski. And as much as that frustrated me and still to some extent does to this day, although winning that series definitely did help me get over it, and Pavelski's performances throughout the rest of the postseason also helped me get over it, Matt Dumba is a pretty solid defenseman. Certainly not the best that the Dallas Stars could get or could have gotten in free agency, but given the options left and given the the really lack of moves made in order to fully improve the blue line, I think adding Matt Dumba would certainly not be the worst thing. He checks a lot of different boxes that the Dallas Stars would be looking for in a defenseman. He's a veteran that is definitely still in some of his seeing some of his better days. He's not a washed defenseman at only 28 years old. He could slot in somewhere on the top four, and he shoots right-handed, which I know many of you uh, love to talk about. Oh, you need someone that can shoot right-handed so Miro can play on his side, yada, yada, yada. I, I get it, but th- this would you know satisfy uh, that crowd that is thinking that the Dallas Stars desperately need to only sign right-handed defensemen. Matt Dumba does shoot right-handed. And there are rumblings that the Stars are interested in signing him. It's just a matter of how they can acquire the money in order to sign him. 
and, and give him the money that he believes that he deserves while also, you know, still signing Ty Delandria and who knows what other moves the team might be looking to make this off season. And I make the case for Matt Dumba because even though he's coming from Minnesota, which was, you know, he's not, in some ways he is the stereotypical Minnesota wild player, but I think that there's more value to his game with the way he can move the puck. He's been a pretty efi efficient scorer at times throughout his career, not necessarily over the past few seasons, but he did have a 50 point season at one point in his career. And he's not a Ryan Reeves type player that just goes out there and throws his body around. He actually, you know, knows how to play the sport of hockey and could be an effective player out there for the stars while also having a little bit of that edge and competitive fire that the team does seem to be lacking at certain times in certain games. So if you take a look around the league, there are not that many top four defensemen left that I think makes sense for the stars. I still really like Noah Hannafin as a player, but I think that he might cost too much, uh, 4.9 five million dollars for Noah Hannafin I would hope the Dallas Stars could get Matt Dumba for cheaper than that maybe somewhere in the three million dollar range and it might even be another one-year deal as we've seen that Jim Nill is exclusively signing one-year deals it seems this offseason but I think Dumba would be would make for an interesting addition to the defensive core he clearly knows a lot about the Stars having played in the same division as them for the past several seasons the Stars know a lot about him so I'm not shocked if the rumors are true that the stars are interested in adding his services as they've gotten a front row seat to watching him play over the past handful of seasons. And with the limited number of defensemen left on the market, I think it would be wise for the stars to acquire him if they can do so reasonably without having to give up too much in a trade. Uh, and really the question is, are you okay with giving up a Foxa or Mason Marchman in exchange for a player like Matt Dumba? Let me know in the comment section down below on YouTube on your thoughts on any of this. Who the Dallas Stars should trade? Is Patrick Kane worth getting? Is Matt Dumba worth getting? Do you want to see them pursue different free agents? Tarasenko, uh, Patrice Bergeron. It's really more a matter of whether or not he's going to be playing at all. Uh, for, we need to figure that out first, not just, oh, where is he going to play? We need to know if Bergeron is playing at all. Uh, and would be crazy to see a guy who's been a lifetime Boston Bruin play for a different team but despite the age, I think the Dallas Stars could certainly benefit from adding uh, the six-time Selkie Trophy winner to their roster. But let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in and continuing to make us your first listen of the day. Subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow along on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. We are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. We'll, of course, be back here tomorrow. We are back in the swing of things. We'll finish out this week uh, with an episode Thursday and Friday as well. And then we'll be back to regularly scheduled programming from here on out. So I hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday. Take care of yourselves. And we will see you back here tomorrow.